Hi there, this is Billy Cosmosis, and I'm here to give you three tips on getting your kick and bass slamming, getting it sounding fat and chunky at the gig. Um, first tip is about EQ on basses. Second is about side chaining, in case you don't know how to do that. And third is about advanced side chaining. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get on. So, look here, you'll see I've got a kick drum here. I'll play it. There you go, 140 BPM. And uh, over here I've got a bass line doing straight sixteenths. Nothing very complicated there or surprising. But that's your basic driving trance lines. And uh, it sounds like that. And it's coming from this here synth. If I play it, there you go. Basic trance groove. Now, first thing I wanted to point out was about EQ. You'll see I've got a uh, an EQ inserted on this channel. I've done some basic EQ on it, notching a few frequencies out, taking a bit of the middle of the mid-range out so it doesn't sound like that. Uh, and now, this is the thing I want to point out. I've got a uh, an EQ node here at 30 hertz, which is below the range of of um, of hearing really. It's a, it's not below the range of hearing, but it's 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 below the useful frequencies. It's the very bottom end of the sub bass. It's kind of nice. You can only feel it. You can't really hear it uh, so well. Now, um, listen to what happens if I. Uh, remove everything below 30 or with a steep high pass 30 listen on the baseline listen to what happens now of course you're gonna have to have decent headphones on if you're gonna hear any difference whatsoever of course laptop speakers are not gonna do it <laughs> or even earbuds uh, you will only hear a small difference, but okay, so here we are. I'm going to take it out, in, out, in. Now, there's a huge difference um, just by removing the very, very low frequencies out of the bass line. As I said, that's high pass, steep high pass filter at 48, set to... 30 hertz which is very very low so what's happening there this is the important thing uh, because uh, it sounds as though that the bass line goes up very slightly in volume and the kick becomes clearer and the whole th the whole bottom end has more definition uh, plus if you're removing low low frequencies in the bass line that's going to help your headroom when it comes to the final mastering so it's a, it's a, can only be a good thing in from those three points of view so what is actually happening um well i think what's happening is that the low frequencies on the bass line are conflicting with the low frequencies on the kick and they are arguing and phase cancelling um, low frequencies like cats, two cats in a sack, cannot coexist peacefully. They have to argue with each other. And uh, so if you want your uh, kick to sound big and fat and chunky, then um, if you have very, very low frequencies, which aren't a whole lot of use, uh, being eaten up by the bass line, then... Uh, they're going to conflict. So if you remove them, then you will get a, a, a more room, more low frequency space for the kick frequencies to develop unhindered. And so it will sound more consonant, more chunky, more fat. 
So, uh, an, another possible reason that 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 difference happens is that there's um, all EQs introduce some kind of phase shift as well. So there might be something going on there as well that makes that effect. But it's a very pronounced effect, and it's worth um, doing that to your bass lines, high passing them with a steep high pass at a very low frequency, and you gain additional clarity on your kick. So that's tip one. Now, on to side chaining. Now, your usual way of side chaining in live is very, very easy. All you do is, let me put the kick on again, is you get your, your bass line, and in live you just get a compressor, whack one in here, turn it on, go to your, turn your side chain option on, and then choose your kick as an input. In this case, my kick is going to a group called Loop for reasons which uh, are obscure to you. Okay, and then you just turn up this gain knob to push the signal to make the compressor work. So, there you go. And you set your release time there. That's too long. The bass line's not recovering its full amplitude before the next kick hits. But if you go somewhere in the middle, you'll get a nice bounce that's in tempo. Obviously that's too much, I'm exaggerating it so I can hear what I'm doing. And then you put your gain down, that's zero side chaining. That's a bit too much maybe. But now you've got a nice bounce happening. Now, live used to have a scale down the side to show you how much you were ducking it, which was kind of useful information to see, you know, you could measure that you were going six or eight dB of duck. And so you can just reset it when you look at any compressor, because you know how much you average, generally you duck it by to get a good sound. Uh, but they did away with that for some strange reason, so you have to do it by ear and eye. And so that's a good it's a good sound bouncing along that kind of effect is very much more noticeable on a big system when you can feel the bass because you can feel the bass kind of moving in and out sucking and pushing and uh, sucking in this case when your bass line is sucking it's uh, it's a good thing not a <laughs> not a bad thing 